All right, so today we're gonna to cover the gravimetric analysis of an unknown sulfate. So you're gonna get your unknown in your unknown jar. Uh, you'll have that unknown powder in there that's some kind of metal sulfate, but we don't know what the metal is. So we don't know, you know what the gravimetric factor is or anything like that. You'll mass out the appropriate amount of this, add it to your 250 or 400 milliliter beaker, and you're gonna put about approximately 50 milliliters of water in there with that unknown white powder. Um, if you have a little bit more or a little bit less, it doesn't matter because the amount of white powder that's in here isn't going to change. Um, it'll be relatively soluble, but to aid in the dissolution, we're gonna make the water slightly acidic. So you're gonna get your six molar HCl. That'll be in one of the hoods. Get a little bit of that, and you're gonna add about 20 drops of that to this to make the solution more acidic and to help it dissolve. Once you've done that, you'll put it on a hot plate, turn that on, start heating it up. We wanna make sure that it doesn't boil. We wanna get it hot, we wanna get it close to boiling, but not to actually boil it. And stir with a stir rod to help make sure that it stays homogenous and that it's completely dissolved. If you're worried, if you don't think you can tell from looking at it when it's almost boiling, but not quite, you do have a thermometer in your drawer, so you can certainly use that. Um, and once you're at you know, 80, 85, 90 degrees, that's good. You can turn it off and move on to the next step. Um, make sure that if you do use a stir rod in here or you do use a um, uh, thermometer, remember now your unknown is dissolved in, in the water. So if you introduce anything into there and you get some of that solution on here, part of your unknown is gonna be on this. So you wanna make sure that if you do use this or the stir rod, you rinse it back into that container. So you make sure you're not losing any part of that possible product. Um, next then we need to precipitate out the sulfate with the barium. So we have to make an insoluble precipitate of a known composition. And we're gonna use barium chloride for that. You'll have barium chloride in another hood. So you're gonna get your 25 milliliters of barium chloride. And once this is at the appropriate temperature, you can turn off the hot plate and you'll just add that slowly as well. So making sure that your solution isn't too hot, making sure you're adding the barium chloride slowly, make sure you're stirring as you do. All of this is gonna encourage or help to get more precipitate. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you're ideally precipitating every bit of that sulfate out. So this process might take a little while because we're adding a pretty large amount of barium chloride very slowly, but again, in terms of accuracy, in terms of ensuring that you get all the product, this is the best way to do it. Once you've actually got that precipitate, and you don't see it here, of course, but when you do, you'll actually see a lot of white solid precipitate forming on the bottom. Now we have to separate it out. We need to isolate the precipitate from the remaining solvent, and so we're gonna do that via a vacuum filtration. So you're gonna wanna get a Buchner funnel, set up your Filtration flask, just like this. Filtration flask, is, of course, has the side arm on it. Get your red rubber tubing out, connect that to the vacuum line, get your filter vac, which is either your little black donut shaped thing here or a gray half cone, and you're gonna use that to help create a really tight seal here. And when we open up the vacuum line, which is parallel to the nozzle, I should start to pull some vacuum there. You can see that, especially with that filter vac, forming a pretty tight vacuum. Um, then you need to get some filter paper. We'll have that in the oven for you already because this is Florida. If you were to mass out filter paper directly from the container, you would think that it's it's empty and it's dry, but it isn't because it's Florida. And it's got a lot of water weight on it. So to make sure you get a true dry filter paper mass, we put the filter paper in the oven ahead of time for you. So you'll come in here get your now dry filter paper, take it to the balance right away, mass it out on the balance so you have a true dry mass of your filter paper. And then when you're ready, bring your setup, go ahead and set that in the Buchner funnel. You can add a little water to um, uh, get it to stick down to the filter um, so you know that it's ready. And then you're just slowly going to pour your solution through here and you should see clear water coming through and your white filtrate, your white precipitate um, sticking behind on that filter paper. 
if you do this slowly, you should be okay. If for whatever reason, the water that comes through is cloudy, that means some amount of your precipitate has also come through. You may need to do a second filtration after you've completely emptied this out, rinsed it a few times. Again, you wanna be 100% sure you're getting all that product. And then if the water's cloudy, you'll just stop the vacuum, take this out, pour that cloudy liquid back into your beaker and then run it through the filtration a second time. If the filtration goes well the first time or, or if you have to do it again, whatever, but once you are getting a clear liquid coming through and you know all your filtrate is on the filter paper here, you can let it run for a couple extra minutes to ensure um, that it's dry and then very carefully remove the filter paper from here, which I didn't do, but that's okay. This is just a demo. Bruh. Get your filter paper out, get a watch glass, make sure it's labeled some way so you know what it is. Put your filter paper on the clean watch glass, bring that back to the oven to dry. And then you're gonna let that dry, ideally for several hours, maybe even the oven overnight. Come back at a later date, mask that again. Just the filter paper on that same balance, put it back in the oven and you're gonna get masses. And if the mask keeps dropping, you know it's still wet. So you're gonna mass it until you get a plateau, until you have two masses that are essentially the same. So you're confident that this is a dry filter paper and the only thing on there now is that filtrate that's present before. Um, and then you'll report that, use the gravimetric factor for barium sulfate, figure out what amount of this or that filtrate is sulfate, compare that back to your original mass to find out what's the percentage of sulfate in your original mass. That's all, it's a relatively easy procedure. Uh, probably the most lengthy thing is, is coming back once or twice to, to mass your sample again. Alrighty.